This is Jared from Commit Quality, and in today's video, we're going to go over a new feature added to Playwright.net as part of version 1.45, and it's the introduction of the Clock API. I've already done a video on this for the Playwright test version, but now I want to do it for .NET. It's a really exciting feature. I'm really happy they've added this. It's a way of accurately simulating time-dependent behavior, so you can manipulate time, you, you can speed up timers, you don't have to wait for anything anymore. If we go over to commitquality.com and go to the practice page and go to time testing, we have two components here. We have a current time feature, which just displays the current time, and we also have this timer feature, which starts at five minutes and counts down to zero, and once it hits zero, a message will appear. We'll see that message a little further on into the test. But first of all, I just want to deal with this current time behavior right now. So first thing I want to do is copy this URL and I want to open up my Visual Studio. I've already got a test set up here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to replace this URL with the practice clock one. So we go directly to it. And now I want to interact with the, the Clock API. And the great thing about this is the Clock API is really simple to use. They've got quite a few different methods on there. We're going to go through quite a few, quite a lot today. However, if there is something I haven't covered, just drop a comment down below and I can uh, clarify in further detail. But I'm going to go over the ones I found most useful so far. So if I say await page dot clock, you can see I've got IntelliSense. Now, if you don't have this available, it's highly likely you haven't updated. So make sure you go to two tools, NuGet package manager, manage for your solution. And inside updates, you'd have an update say in playwright.net. In my case, I've already updated. So you can see here I'm on version 1.45.1. If you're not on this, then of course, select this and make sure that you've updated the latest version and all will be good to go. So going back to this, we've got clock. If I do dot now, we can see a bunch of methods. And the first one I want to show you is interacting with that first component of the clock where it's showing the time. And I want to set it to a fixed point in time. And it's quite easy to do this. We can just say set fixed time async. And here we just need to pass through the date we want to go through. So I'm going to say uh, 2024 0101 T and we'll make it at nine o'clock in the morning. So we'll say nine zero zero. So all we've said here is set my systems clock to nine o'clock and do not update it. Keep it static so I can do whatever I need to on the test. So I could actually say um, await, expect. Let's get at the test ID. So we'll say page dot get by test ID. And I know the test ID is clock because I only just wrote this. And I'm going to say to contain text async, and we'll just do 0900. There is a bit more text that shows, but uh, we'll keep it simple for this and just show you the test ID is correct as well. If I inspect this, we can see here we've got this test ID is clock, and then the timer below is timer, which we'll be using in a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is if I put a breakpoint on here, just so we can see what's going on, let's uh, rebuild our solution. And what I'm expecting to see now, once this is loaded, is that the timer is set to nine o'clock and my assertion passes. So here we are. We can see time has been set. It's not increasing or anything anymore. And we can see it was set to nine. Oh, however, that didn't work. Oh, it's because it's not zero nine. It was nine zero. The locator was found. It's because the text didn't contain it. So I put zero nine and that was nine dot dot zero. So if I just run that again, we'll see that passes and works as expected. And you saw that the timer was statically set on nine o'clock. Perfect. Nice and easy on that one. But what if we said, okay, we might want to set the time to nine o'clock, but then let the time continue to increase. Well, instead of using set fixed time, you can use set system time async. And that is the same as fixed time. However, the clock will, will start to increase. So if I debug on this now, you can see the assertions passed because it was set to nine straight away. But now the timer is counting down, which we're not really worried about this. But we can also see that the actual clock is increasing. Perfect. Two nice, simple ways. But now then, what if we wanted to kind of replicate the scenario where a user was to close their laptop lid and reopen it at a given time? Well, this is nice and simple to do as well. Let's get rid of our assertion because we don't really need that anymore. And what we can do instead is we can say await page.clock. 
dot pause at async and what we can see here is advance the clock by jumping forward in time and pause the time once this method is called no timers are fired unless one of these methods are called here so i'm going to take this time this date time here because we only really care about the time aspect of it anyway but ideally this would be at a future date and let's debug our test and see what happens now and tell you what, we're going to put a breakpoint on here so we can see what the time was before and then the time is after we've called this functionality. So you can see right now, timer is increasing as expected. If I step over my code and now go here, you can see the current time has gone back to nine o'clock, but it's not increasing. And that's because exactly what has been said inside this method is it's going to jump forward and pause to that time. So you might have already guessed it. The way to resume this is by calling the resume method so i can say underneath await page dot clock dot resume async and this will allow the clock to continue ticking over then and it'll resume just like a normal one would so if i debug on this i've moved the breakpoint here as well so we'll see it goes to nine o'clock once we continue over it if we go here now you can see it's continued over the breakpoint and you can see it's now carrying on with the time as expected. So let's continue on that and that's all great. So that's just simple ways how you can manipulate time, put it to a given time, how you can stop a timer, restart a timer, stop how you can pause a timer at a given time and then resume it. But now I want to deal with the actual timer itself. And if we go back to the web page, what you can see now is because five minutes have passed, we can see you won, go subscribe to commit quality. Now imagine you're doing a test on this. You're not going to want to go to this page and wait five minutes for this to count down your test is going to be extremely long and you're probably going to deem no value in it well now what we can say is i don't have to wait that five minutes i can say update this timer to fast forward by five minutes so i instantly see this message so how do we do that let's jump into this and have a look so today i'm going to copy all the tests i'm going to change this to timer and uh, we'll get rid of this and we want to stay to go to async but we'll remove everything else so because we're dealing with the timer, the first thing we want to do is we want to install a fake implementation of the timer. So to do that, what we can say is await page dot clock dot a install async. And you can see here, this is install fake implementation for the following time related function. So it's basically just, a, just allowing us to manipulate the time again. And what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to pass a new time object, which is going to be the date time now. So I can say new. And inside here, we'll say time date equals date time dot now. We've created a fake implementation of the clock and we are saying set it to today's date and time. Once again, we only really care about the time on here. Then we're going to go to the practice clock page. And now what we're going to say is await page dot clock dot fast forward async and we're going to set this to five minutes so it'll be zero five zero zero and then we can even add an assertion message await expect uh, page dot get by text and we'll take that green text which is you won go subscribe to commit quality and we'll say it has to be visible so to be visible async Perfect. So first of all, I want to do this without using this fast forward method to show you that it's, it wouldn't work straight away unless we waited five minutes in our tests. I'll add a breakpoint here, but of course, we're not even going to hit that because this timer is going to fail. So let's just do run, first of all. And what you'll see, look, is we've got the current date, but the timer is still on five minutes. It's going to keep running and eventually time out because we couldn't find this locator because the text doesn't exist yet. Now then, now then, let's up, let's uncomment this code and now put it in debug mode and let's see what happens. There we are. Instantly, the five-minute timer has gone to zero and it's got you won. Go subscribe to commit quality. Perfect. Continue over and of course that assertion will pass. Amazing. Now I do before we log off this, I want to show you one other way. What we can say is await page dot clock dot fast forward async but instead of using a string what we can use instead is milliseconds so what you can do is say let's say we want to advance 50 seconds we'll do that let's comment this part out 
But what we should see now is our timer is not going to display this message. Our test will fail. But instead, it'll be it'll jump down by fifty seconds. So let's debug it. Of course, we're going to fail on that assertion anyway, but it should be quick enough for us to see. There we are, and it's jumped to 4 minutes and 10 rather than starting at the 5-minute timer. Of course, it's failed because we only jumped forward 50 seconds. I personally prefer using the string option here, but I thought it's a good way to show you how you can do it in milliseconds if that's if you want to go into that kind of detail as well. And that's where I wanted to go over this clock function. This clock API is super cool, really good update from Playwright. They still seem to amaze me with all these updates they do in. So hopefully they keep this up as always. If you do have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. I've also enabled super thanks on my videos. If you do want to help contribute towards the running of my channel or my website, you can do that via super thanks. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.